You guys have heard me talk in the past about how I was a solopreneur and got burnt out in my business and then decided that I needed to partner. And ever since I started partnering, I've been able to scale my business a lot faster and I've been much happier in my business because I have people that are helping me with all the roles and responsibilities that go along with owning a flipping company, buying multifamily properties, being a private lender and everything in between. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about what to look for in a partner. My name's April Crossley, I'm a real estate investor based out of Berks County, Pennsylvania. I do all the things from private lending to flipping to wholesaling to multifamily to partnering on syndications and everything in between that's real estate related. And I do a lot of that now with partners. And when I talk about bringing on a partner, I'm not necessarily talking about creating an LLC with someone, although that could be a form of partnership. I'm even just talking about simply a private money lender lending to a borrower or a borrower borrowing from a private money lender. Or if you're flipping a house with somebody and one of you is on the deed and the other is paid as a project manager, anyone who's coming into your business, how do you know who someone is that you would want to work with. I think I'm saying that the right way. So I'm going to tell you some things to look for in a partner to know if they're a good fit for you or if they're not a good fit for you in your business. So first, I'm huge on meeting that partner multiple times. So we recently purchased a mobile home park in Tennessee and people said to me, how did you meet your partner? And my partner actually came to a presentation I was doing on private money, was listening to me speak, came up to me afterwards, introduced herself, and that was it. We hit it off instantly, got along. She started talking to me about what she does and her business and her family and where she invests. I did the same, but I met her several times before we did any business together. So you really want to meet that person multiple times before you start doing business with them. I feel like you can really tell who someone is when you're in front of them and doing everyday life things with them. And what I mean by that is I often tell people when you meet someone that's a potential partner, take them out to eat, go to a restaurant together, like do normal everyday things, don't just sit in an office. I feel like you can tell a lot about a person by the way they treat servers and staff at a restaurant. So that's like one of my things. I like to go out to eat with people and see how they treat other people and staff at the restaurant. So meet your potential partner multiple times. Number two, Talk about core values or think about what your core values are and do your core values align with their core values. So if you're like, I'm not even sure what my core values are, just go to the internet and Google core values. It'll bring up a huge list and pick out the ones that are most important to you. And you don't have to sit down with your partner and say, hey, what are your core values? Here are my core values. Let's see if they align. You just need to have conversations with them about things outside of business. Like what do they value in their life? So simple questions like, hey, do you go on vacation every year? Where do you go on vacation? Like, does your whole family come on vacation? Like, what is your life like? How many kids do you have? You know, like, Whatever is important to you. Do you go to church? Can you give me an example of a situation where something went wrong in your business and how did you handle that? Or have you had partners in the past where something went wrong with that partner and how did you handle that situation? How did you correct it? Did you have to let that person go? Tell me about a difficult time in your life and how you handled that. And tell me about the greatest thing in your life. Tell me what your goals are. Tell me what vision do you have for your future? What do you want out of life? Just start asking them to talk about themselves, questions that are gonna draw out conversation where they'll talk about themselves, and you'll learn a lot about what is important to that person and what they value in life, okay? Number three, what is their money management style? This is huge, okay? Huge. I almost got into a bad partnership because I wasn't focused enough on the other person's money management style. And a mentor of mine called me out on it. So I was running a deal by my mentor that 
I was thinking of partnering on and I'm all about the deal and I was so wrapped up in the deal, but I'd never done business with this partner before. And my mentor, instead of asking me about the deal, started asking me about the partner and saying, what is your partner like? Have you looked at your partner's personal financial statement? How do they manage their money? How did you meet them? What is their family life like? Like, does it align with yours? Like all kinds of questions, a lot revolving around their money management style. So he's like, make sure their money management style is the same as yours, because if it's not, when you get into business with them, you're gonna likely have arguments and there's gonna be tension over how money is managed in the business. So what do I mean by money management style? For instance, when I get a paycheck or a flip profit or money from my business, I don't instantly spend all that money. I'm not the type of person that has a big, huge house, five fancy cars, like taking tons of vacations and spending every dime and racking up all my credit cards. I have equity in some of my properties. I like to keep some cash liquid in the bank. I feel like I'm very well balanced, very conservative with my money and the way that I look at deals. When I pulled a personal financial statement on these partners and started looking at their credit score and everything, I noticed that they max out all their credit cards. They have all kinds of things, all kinds of toys, like multiple houses, four wheelers, cars, this and that, but they don't have any money liquid in savings. They have no retirement or money stashed away. They have rentals, but they're using every dime from their rental properties to pay their bills. And they're just keeping up with their debt. And they had a lot of debt. I am the polar opposite. So our money management styles were at two different ends of the spectrum. You can't do business with people who view money differently than what you view money. You have to have the same money management style. If you remember anything from this video today, Remember that because that deal fell apart and I feel relieved that it did, okay? Number four, what are their strengths and weaknesses? All my partners have different strengths than what I have. So I'm gonna give you an example. Most of my partners are visionary. I am not very visionary. I have a low risk tolerance. Most of my partners are visionary and they dream big and they'll take on a lot of risk and they see what a project could be. I can walk into an empty building and I can't see anything except an empty building. I can't see like, oh, that could be an office space. That could be a common seating area. That could be this, that could be that. I walk in, I'm like, okay, it's an empty building. What would you do with a place like this? I have no idea. I like to team up with people that are visionaries. Like they can walk into a building and say, this building looks a wreck but here's what it could be. Here's how many bedrooms. This is what I foresee. I love that. So a lot of my partners are visionary. I have some partners that are not detail oriented at all. Like they're very visionary, but they don't read any paperwork at all. So we'll get documents for closing and they'll forward them to me and say, these documents look great. What do you think? And I'll go through them and be like, this is wrong. This is wrong. This seems changed. This is wrong. Pull this out here. I'm not the most detail oriented person in the world, but I know, especially when my partners aren't detail oriented, that I need to step up my game and go over things in finer detail. So you can ask them kind of what are your strengths or what do you love about this business? Like my project manager loves paint and flooring and designing a house. I hate that stuff. So she is a good fit for that role and she's a good fit for me, okay? You don't want someone that has the same strengths as you. If you're super detail oriented, great with numbers. You don't want someone that's super detail oriented and great with numbers. You want someone that's going to push you outside of your comfort zone. You want that visionary, that big thinker, that person that's going to be bringing you deals. So balance your strengths and weaknesses. And then number five is the obvious one, but this is the one most people tackle first that I feel like you should tackle last. Okay, so I feel like when you're interviewing a partner or talking to someone that could be a potential partner, you should look at all these things first. And this is very last. If you're like, great, we get along, they're a good person, they've got great strengths. Now I'm going to check their personal financial statement, their credit score, do a background check, 
look at their LLC documents and make sure everything's on the up and up. Sometimes something shows up on their background check. I'll give you an example <laughs> of someone that came to me that actually um, was banned from doing any kind of business in another state near mine because he was like charged with fraud and creating a fraudulent business and raising money fraudulently. So I was like, I'm gonna swipe left on that. Don't think I could ever work with this person. So you do have to do your regular background credit checks, check their personal financial statement, make sure this will tie back into their money management style that what they say matches up with what they do on their personal financial statement. But check that all last, all of this should come first. So I hope this list helps you guys. If you are looking for partners in your business, which if you click like and you subscribe, you know I'm super passionate about partnering to help you scale and grow your real estate portfolio faster. Thank you for tuning in today. You guys can find out more about us by joining our Facebook group, RVREI, following us on Instagram, April Crosley, or checking out our website, aprilcrosley.us.